Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to another epic online battle for Total War. We are back with Thrones of Britannia and today we have an intense battle. As you can see, it is 77 minutes long and there's not many Total Wars that you get this nowadays. So this is going to be truly epic for sure. I will cut out the boring bit so it is just pure action the entire time. As well as that, we have 15,000 soldiers over 15,000 soldiers in this battle and I think one of the things that really excels in Total War Thrones Britannia are the siege maps and the siege battles. They really are something special and I wish these maps and this design gets taken over to more and more future Total Wars because they really are just super exciting and interesting and every single one is very very different so I think this is definitely one of the positives to come out of the Thrones of Britannia saga title is the siege maps and just how goddamn awesome the they are. So today we have a battle between the forces of Mercia and the Anglo-Saxons of West Sussex against the Welsh factions who are trying to defend their homeland. Mercia are coming up with a large portion of these Curl Spearmen on the front line. These guys are mainly going to be the forces that try and take the walls and basically just soften up for more of the elite Fens and other you know, heavy infantry which will be soon moving up well after these guys are pushed into position. Then behind Behind them, the archers, obviously we have the mailed swordsmen and the other heavy infantry I was just talking about, as well as the axemen and the royal spearmen who will be kind of the rear guard. Once the walls have been softened up, that's when they push forward. Over on the Wessex side, we do again probably have a similar, no, the uh, Wessex force is actually moving up very early axemen first, which is very interesting. I mean, this is also a very valid strategy, pushing forward these axemen to take the walls is going to be great, but ready to meet them is going to be the Welsh shield wall ready to keep their line sturdy and keep the enemy at bay. I mean, what's not to love right there? That is pretty goddamn epic. Then, obviously, on the back lines for uh, Wessex, we do obviously just have more elite swordsmen, mailed swordsmen. I'm sure we'll have the uh, the kite shield swordsmen as well somewhere as well, the really late tier ones. We even have an artillery piece right here, which is very cool. Then, if we take a look at the Welsh setup, again, on their front line, we were just looking at it, we have the Welsh swordsmen. These guys are not going to be, like, able to keep the enemy back like super easily but they're going to do a good job and they're going to keep the enemy you know a little bit stationary for a while make it not as easy as they would like to break forward and wipe out the enemy forces as we do get the first little engagement right here then as we continue to go back to the second layer of defense again i love the way that the thrones of britannia siege battles are set up like this it's just really cool how you do have so many different defenses i mean look at this as well we have like barricades and a shield wall it's just awesome. So over on the inner layer, we do have some veteran spearmen. They're going to be supported by some veteran Welsh axes, um, along with some more Welsh noble cavalry. And then over here, we have probably a similar setup as well. Nice little defensive position right here. Some mailed swordsmen and also the elite longbows. And that's where the Welsh, Welsh roster really excels is in them longbows. Then finally, for the nice little last stand, again, we have a beautiful setup of spearmen right here in their shield wall formation and I imagine we'll see more infantry kind of filter back into this last layer as the attackers come in and push them back. Interesting to note though, the balance of power is uh, pretty decently in favour of the attackers. So let's just jump into the action. The reason I wanted to do that kind of intro whilst we were watching the battle was mainly because it's just such a long replay that I wanted to try and you know, kind of cut out the beginning bits if I can to make this one smoother but make sure you guys are sitting comfortably got your feet up a nice coffee tea some snacks or something as Apollo would say and prepare yourself for one epic Thrones of Britannia battle as well as that obviously we have the blood and gore now as well so we should see some cool animations soldiers being cut to pieces all very exciting and speaking about getting cut cut to pieces these spearmen are definitely struggling to make any progress on the walls Obviously, you know, these are just, I think they're called Coral Spearmen, which are a really, really low-tier infantry unit, and they're just going to be getting destroyed. We do have some Archer Fire, though, on the gate, softening this up. This is always so dumb. Like, I always hate this in Total War, and I mean, it's even worse in Warhammer, how the how your retreating troops run through the gate. It's just, like, such a, a silly mechanic, and I would love for that to be changed. I do love how these uh, custom towers, though, have been destroyed. Have these always been in Thrones? They look really cool. Something I've never noticed before. 
The rest of the Mercian front line, though, is just being decapitated. However, they are starting to bring up the big boys, the mailed uh, swordsmen. These guys are not to be messed with, and they'll have a much better job at breaking their way through the uh, front lines of the Welsh. Then over on the other side, how are the forces of Alfred the Great faring? Probably a bit better, because they're pushing up their more elite infantry first. Um, and you, it's, it's, it's funny as well to see like both of these strategies conflicting on the same team. Like Mercy is moving up their weaker infantry to kind of just get their soldiers on the wall. And then their elite infantry is going to move in and clear out the defenders once that weaker infantry has been taken care of. Um, and uh, where Sex is going for the complete opposite thing, putting in their elite infantry just to smash their way through the walls right away. And as I say, I think both strategies are very, very valid as we'll have more and more infantry being brought up. I really hope as well they start burning a large portion of the city as well because I think that'd be really cool to see just the city in flames as more and more of the troops do push forward. And if you guys do want to see more of these longer battles, whether it's on Thrones of Britannia, Rise of Mordor, uh, whatever, do let me know in the comments down below. And obviously by hitting that like button, it lets me know that you want to see more content like this. Whether it is Thrones of Britannia or just, you know, longer battles in general, because I, I am willing to do more of these longer battles. It's just it takes a lot of effort. And, uh, you know, sometimes if, a bat if I watch a 70-minute battle and it's not very good, I might just not upload it. And that kind of takes up the entire day. So if you guys do want to see more of these battles, you just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to oblige uh, if these videos do well. If these videos do better than the shorter ones, then, yeah, I'll definitely stick to doing more of these ones. As well as this, I've recently done a bargain with my Discord, uh, the people who played this battle, which I want to say a massive thank you to them as well whilst we're in this uh, engagement. Um, they're they're going to go ahead and start their own kind of roleplay Rise of Mordor campaign, which should be really exciting because then I'll have that one and also the other Rise of Mordor campaign. And I'm sure they'll obviously, you know, they're always really, really good with high quality battles. They kind of know the perfect balance between cinematic and also... Uh, you know, good strategy as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. So the Anglo-Saxons are trying to break their way, hammer their way through the central part of the gate, which is not a bad strategy. If they can, can clear through this gate, they can get the majority of their army broken through. And have they just... If they basically have just cleared out the entire defense. So this strategy of pushing your infantry through, uh, the elite infantry through, forward first oh my god i can't speak um is a great plan and a great strategy and it's going to help them out pretty massively um and i'm surprised that the welsh longbows aren't really picking away but i guess if you can set up a shield wall like this then you're going to be pretty impenetrable to missiles so having this fortress uh, i think a shield fortress is what it's called is just going to give you a great advantage however i think the outer walls were only lightly defended and they were just seeing the, seeing what they could get done and if they could really, you know, harass the enemy, especially with the artillery coming in and destroying the towers, it was kind of almost like it wasn't worth defending them. So, uh, so I think, you know, this light defense has done its done its job. Has it killed many men? It's killed what we got the. We, it's killed about two thousand soldiers, which isn't bad. The defenders have also lost just over a thousand, like fourteen hundred. So it's done its job. However, you know, they've definitely taken casualties and I think a lot of the weaker units of Mercia have gone down as the rest of their army just is waiting for its chance to push in which is just, oh, it just looks so cool I love the way of like all the units and the men just pouring into the city and the way that the city is set up and oh, it just looks great burning oil coming down and then one of the things I love doing is having archers up on this position right here because once the archers are up there they can just volley down on the attackers as they try and break away more of the city. I'm hoping we'll see the city be set aflame, though. Uh, is this Mercy? Oh, no, this is... Oh, yeah, this is Welsh, sorry. The Welsh forces are just retreating to the inner layer. It looks like they've gone ahead and decided to give up here on this outer position. Starting to set fire to these outer positions as well. That's going to be, obviously, destroying the morale, getting that settlement damage up, which I believe goes ahead and debuffs the enemy forces slowly, but surely. Or the defending forces, I should say. So overall, Mercy, I mean, uh, Wessex has gone ahead and surrounded these last couple spear guard of the Welsh. As they try their best to keep themselves alive, but it's only a matter of time until these, these axe infantry take them apart. 
Lucky that no one else is going like all the way around either, like setting up here and just charging in. That would really kill them. And so we got a, some nice pathfinding right there, unfortunately. Yeah, that, that, that's been an issue in Total War for ages. It just seems like there's been a lot of Total War issues with sieges, which I just haven't really focused and cleared out. Because I think siege battles are one of the best parts of the game. And if they just, you know, they've, they've already nailed the siege maps in Thrones of Britannia, if they just fixed a lot of the bog, bugs and made maybe interesting positions in the siege battles, like what I would love to see in siege battles is um, like shrines like we had in Shogun 2 return and like have the shrines scattered throughout the city so then it's more incentive for the defenders to uh, defend these positions rather than just camp back in the third layer. Um, obviously, no, that's not what they're doing in this battle, but I feel like just having like you know buffs, you know, for defending the walls or buffs for defending you know the first layer or the second layer, and as the attackers you know push through, uh, they go ahead and claim them buffs. You know, I feel like that would just be a, a great like incentive for defending areas in sieges like they would historically. You know. Because a lot of the time in these siege battles, you can just oh, but I'll give up these outer walls and just defend this. But it kind of takes away the, the fun and enjoyment. So I feel like if there was incentives for both sides to attack and defend certain areas, it'd make for a much, much interesting uh, engagement for sure. So yeah, as we can see, the entire Welsh defence has been cut in half now. Uh, I think they're simply just waiting for their chance to uh, reform. And you can see, I think this is the last Welsh unit right here being cleared out. Oh no, there's actually still a little bit of Welsh forces, but I'm sure we'll see this unit kind of sent round and just cut them down as they do get surrounded. The morale of their forces will go down and that'll be it for them. As you can see, Wessex basically moving in the entirety of their force, looking to come at them from every angle. There is only two positions, so Wessex is gonna have to make their way across and break through the enemy. Uh, it does also look like the, the forces of the Welsh though aren't done here. They've got some cavalry, the javelin cavalry, looking for some damage. And there's also a few infantry stuck ar around the battlefield. So, you know, even at this point, even this far, you know, into the, the outer defence, the Welsh are still holding on and not giving up. And it's definitely proving worth for them because they're, they're taking away a large portion of... But they're taking away the ease of the enemy forces and they're taking down casualties for every inch that Mercia take. They're definitely being cut down and losing men. And because this gatehouse has only just been taken, I think. Has it even been taken yet? Uh, no, it, yeah, the gatehouse hasn't even been taken yet um, because I assume there's the same amount of units. Mercia can't pour through their infantry. So because of that, these Welsh kind of pockets of resistance are holding their own and, and keeping the enemy at bay. You know, they're still managing to hold these walls. And this is when it gets a bit a little bit tricky as well. Because if the Welsh defence can stagger the attackers and force the attackers into attack where the other side isn't ready, then they can easily take advantage of that. You know, the attackers have to be coordinated and they have to be prepared to uh, to fight bravely. I'm also going to just turn up my sound a little bit as it's a little bit quiet. Hopefully I haven't made it too loud now whatsoever. We also have some archers pouring in here trying to hit these Welshmen. And the Welsh cavalry is harassing here. Finally, the gatehouse is going down. And that's going to see the Welsh, in, uh, the Mercian infantry pouring. And there's a lot of them as well. I mean, just waiting for their chance. I love the cheering as well. And the chanting. I think the chanting and the cheering is just so awesome. It really, really is. And I, I'd love for more sounds like that as well more sounds where people are charging and cheering and stuff. We actually could get into some of the skirmisher cavalry charging out against spears. I don't know if this was the smartest idea by the Welsh. I like the, the plan of just trying to break through here and hit this artillery. But they're going to be countered by the Mercian cavalry. And I don't think they're going to be able to do this. As well as that, we're also going to be having the gatehouse going down, which is going to allow them to push in the rest of their units. West Sex, though, have been broken their formation up here and they're preparing themselves they got, yeah, they're basically just taking arrows in the shield castle, which is not going to take damage whatsoever. So, yeah, it looks like this defense is going to be chopped apart. And now that Mercia have kind of dealt with this, they, you know, they got their artillery crew out. That was a nice move here by the Welsh. It just couldn't quite get done uh, what they needed to do. But almost, you know, maybe the Mercian player wasn't paying attention. So let's jump ahead and we'll see. We'll, we'll get ready when the next assault is preparing. Okay, guys, here we go. The Mercian forces are getting ready to assault 
the frontier of the Welsh. We actually have the Mercians trying to break down this barricade, rip apart the shields and the fortifications so they can pour themselves into the city second layer. We also have the Welsh shield wall of spears trying to repel the Mercian spears as well. More reinforcements turning up and trying to get some more swordsmen into the side. I mean, gaps are appearing and they are able to break through these small gaps right here as well. Uh, however, we do have some crossbows up here or some longbows trying to break away on the defense. But again, the shield castle is just so strong. They can really just, you know, sit here and take this arrow fire and not really suffer too much. I mean, this is the smartest thing to do for the defenders is simply just break away and kind of just form up the, you know, save their ammunition for more of the intense engagements. We also have West Sex doing the exact same thing throwing up some of their sword infantry. However, they're a little bit staggered in their push. Obviously, this was the position they really pushed up their infantry. So, I mean, the Welsh could easily surround a large portion of these forces if they wanted to right now, because reinforcements for Wessex is quite far away, and they could easily maybe just make their way, you know, make this force charge in. And I think Wessex has kind of realized this. And they're trying to form up a formation right now. They're actually trying to make their way through the gaps. I mean, if I was the Welsh right now, I would break these formations and look just to completely surround this force that is out of position. Granted, the Axemen are struggling as it is against the elite El... Uh, the, I was about to call the Welsh Elven. Against the Welsh, Welsh Swordsmen. But even still, like, this just seems like a perfect opportunity to surround them as the rest of the Wessex inf infantry is just sitting on this gate, which is... You know, going to take a couple minutes to go over here. You also have their position right here as well as they did break through. It's hard to tell who's who in this little engagement. They did kind of manage to get an envelopment here, but again, more infantry turning up. They're going to have to go into a proper formation here to break this. And the Welsh, you know, the Welsh unit right here is kind of like in halves now, so definitely is a great opportunity but this is a nice way to kind of get around this shield castle formation it's going in thin formation and breaking away and the welsh are doing exactly what i suggested that they do do by kind of just dispatching a couple of units to surround these guys because there's you know look at the support for the west sex west sex need to get their infantry over here asap if they want any chance of kind of dominating this position as more and more of them do break how are Mercia faring? Mercia trying to fight over the fortifications right now. With a few of these longbowmen as well just volleying over. Forget who they are. Just kill them. Exactly. Forget who they are. This is no race war. This is a war. I don't know what I was going to say. But war for land. Nothing personal, kid. Nothing personal. So I think, honestly, it's going to end up coming down to numbers, really, in this battle. And it's whether or not the Welsh can just kind of surround and push back. Because it's not like the Welsh have a lot of men left. And yeah, the Wessex force is just, like, filtering in slowly. I think now we're finally going to see these archers and javelins pushed up. But it just looks like they've got a defensive position here. Whereas it'd be better if they were formed up here. Granted, you know, maybe they just didn't want to kind of overcommit. They wanted to be able to support their uh their mercy and allies if either side i mean yeah that's probably what they're doing right now they're sticking stationary now they're moving their forces um they wanted to decide whether they wanted to really push on this position because what they could easily do if they broke through here if the mercy and forces broke through against the welsh here they could have sent a large portion of their army here smashed through that defensive position come up all the way behind the defenders and basically just prevented their retreat to the, the inner layer which we're starting to see some forces making their way back to that inner layer more and more of the welsh forces though are going down but they're taking down you know one or two West Sex, you know, Anglo-Saxons as they do. So, you know, number-wise, both sides are looking good. I mean, if, if anything, the number-wise, the attackers are losing men pretty dramatically. We can still see that their balance power is still heavily in their favor, so they must have a lot of elite units still left remaining. I love these uh, Anglo-Saxon infantry as well with these, I think they're called like the, 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 the Seuss swords or something like that. Or the curved blades, they're pretty cool. Yeah, I think we're seeing the Welsh archers making their way back. The city is... Yeah, there we go. The city's starting to get destroyed now as well. I don't know what supply has to do with anything. 
There's supply like morale? No, I don't, yeah, I don't know why it reduces supplies, but what does that even do? Honestly, do not know. The Welsh trying to break. I mean, they've pretty much broken through the Mercian in line here. And they're just going to reform. But over on this left-hand side, they are definitely struggling. There's just not enough of these guys to hold them in place. So I'm sure we're going to see these guys breaking through um, with their numbers. I mean, yeah, realistically, they could just select all of this and run it through. There's just not a dense enough formation to stop them. There's a couple men here and there, so they can easily break this. Now they're going to just push forward. Oh, they got some elite Axemen up here as well. The Royal Huskles. Oh! The whole real hostiles are going to just dismantle this shield castle. That's one of the disappointing things as well right there about Friends of Britannia. Is even though that's a really cool shield like castle formation. They just break it as soon as they hit into an enemy formation you know. Or as soon as an enemy formation charges them. That's always just really sad. Like I want them to fight in that formation you know. Sticking swords through the gaps in the shields and stuff you know. I guess that was just too difficult as more and more of the city is set ablaze. We even have some cavalry, hammer and anviling, but they're going to be broken back by the Welsh Noble Cavalry. They're actually going to get a rear charge off on these spearmen as they try and move their way back, and that's a great charge. That's going to take out five, six, seven of these guys. End up, yeah, seven right there. That's not bad, and the cavalry is going to continue to pursue. However, as they do come off of this hill, it's going to leave them very vulnerable to West Sex making their way through the gaps that are being created right here. But we are seeing the uh, Welsh forces bringing their way back to the uh, to the inner wall. They've kind of almost given up this position, and I'm sure what we're going to end up seeing is the Wessex forces moving round and then coming in and, and helping out their Mercy and allies. I mean, again, Mercy could maybe break their way through these gaps, but I don't think they need to. These spearmen or an, an axemen are just going to hold. Um, but the Huskles are going to you know, do their job. The Huskles have great armor piercing. Don't think he's going to save you in this one, my friend, even if he is with you. As more and more of the city burns, more and more of the infantry flies in. I just want more of these, like, flaming buildings. I want the entire city to be a set of lays. And I do like that mechanic that if you burn the city, you know, the, like, the enemy team does, uh, the defenders do get a debuff. I think that's pretty cool. I think it could be implemented a bit better, but I definitely do like it. Yeah, these Huskles are just brutally breaking these guys away. How many kills are they on? Let's take a look. So let's find them. Real Huskles. Hundred, almost 200 kills, and they've only lost half of their men. More infantry turning up here. I don't know why they're not just breaking their way around here and coming around the side. Be a great way to uh, to use that. Yeah, and we're seeing the Welsh just delving too deep, and Wessex immediately jumping in on that, surrounding this infantry unit. But we can see them, you know, have their little famous last stand right here. Even a few units of cavalry as well positioned for the extra shock damage. Perfect, that's very nice there by the Wessex forces. Now they can dispatch all of these guys just to simply come round the back and basically just break into the side of what remains of the Welsh forces. We're also starting to see this line break. There's only 33 of them left and we're also seeing the rest of the Welsh forces. Uh, this unit is just running back. So now they're going to be able to come all the way around and actually hit these guys in the back, which these guys have done a great job at holding in right here. Like a great job of holding. But they're going to be getting enveloped soon. I mean, their best probably decision is just to retreat. The second layer has now been lost. And we're going to see more and more men pushed up. I mean, and the Welsh are just going all out for this position right here. Uh, they've formed back. They've got their nice shield walls here with elite spearmen. They've got archers set up on the wall. And we're going to see more and more of the city just going down. Um, and yeah, the, the Mercian forces are literally just getting ready to go around here and, and open up this breach. We're also starting to take these capture points as well, uh, which do give them, I believe, it gives them um, extra bonuses as well. Wait, is this actually? No, okay, sorry. This is like a mini one, I believe, and it gives them morale bonuses, whereas this is the main one they need to capture. For a second, I was like, wait, is, do they just need to capture that and then they win? I think this just gives them a morale buff, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, I don't think it says, but I think this is just like a mini one, which really helps them out. And then here we go, the uh, West, uh, the last Welsh force, the last Welsh resistance in the second layer. Oh, they, they formed their nice little like anti-cavalry wall right there, but the uh, Wessex cavalry of, uh, oh, there's the Mercian cavalry, are going to move in and dispatch these guys with these now that they are so broken up, because they're going to be supported by heavy infantry as well. We're going to have some of these dudes setting fire. And again, slowly burning down this settlement damage. Doesn't look like a lot, but now they're actually in the city, I think it's going to count for a lot. And they're basically just going to completely surround these guys and rout them. And then we can start to see the rest of the infantry move in. The whole of uh, West Texas as well, moving up their army. Because, I mean, they have a lot of infantry as well. They can push in. So now we're going to go ahead and triple speed again and basically just watch the forces move in and form up their last attack. I mean, this is going to be an interesting battle because if we take a look at the numbers whilst this goes on as well, they still are outnumbered two to one. So I feel like Wessex have the quality, or I should, guess I should call them the Anglo-Saxons, have the quality to break through and just, uh, you know, smash through. Because once they break through here, then they can start, you know, fighting over the cities and stuff. And I'm sure the, Wel the Welsh might go ahead and just defend this, but I imagine they'll set up their defense, you know, kind of as, as a stage defense as they like to do. I mean, I mean, I'm definitely not complaining. It's always awesome when they do that. Hopefully they set fire. Yeah, they're setting fire to the town as they go. And more and more defenses are, you know, also positioned right here as they get ready to keep these guys down with archer fire. Okay, here we go. The final assault has now begun. If we just take a look at the front lines uh, real quickly to see what they're pushing up. So it does look like, you know, Wessex um, and Mercy aren't throwing their most elite units forward, but they do also have some of these Royal Spearmen and these uh, these other heavier infantry, but not like the elite uh, Kite Shield infantry. So they're just trying to soften these guys up really quickly. We also see more Spearmen being thrown in here by the Welsh, but if we just look at the assault ready, like look how much infantry is just here. It's being bombarded by artillery, which is a great plan. Um, but I think yeah, the, the artillery is pounding you. Uh, they're trying to counter the artillery of Mercia, who maybe got a little bit closer. Because something interesting about this battle with artillery is, obviously, if they just stood further back, they could bombard this line without being in range of the Welsh artillery. But it's also using up some nice ammunition from the Welsh, so it's not a complete loss there by the Mercians whatsoever. And they're also getting some really nice volleys there into the side of the Anglo-Saxons. Yeah, this is the perfect crossfire right here. Yeah, good position here by the longbows. I mean, this is what the Welsh are all about, is their longbows. They really do a lot of damage. Oh, and look at that shield wall just forming up as well. Oh, that is bloody beautiful right there. I mean, it'd be great if the, the uh, Anglo-Saxons had some javelins, but it looks like the Welsh are going to be the ones with the javelins. Oh, and these javies are going to hurt. Oh, that's going to do so much armor piercing damage right there. And basically just cut down the Anglo-Saxons. The Anglo-Saxons have the numbers, right? They're going to be getting hammered by missiles. It's a shame that there's no, like, secondary ladders or anything. And that's why I kind of feel like being able to throw grappling hooks or something could be kind of nice. I know it's a bit stupid and, like, stuff like that. But having alternatives to be able to bring up whether it's just bring up some more siege towers or create, maybe there's a unit ability which creates like one ladder and it takes a minute to do so. You know, they maybe cut down some trees or just bring up the crafting materials or something. Um, so be, like being able to then assault these walls properly, I think would be great. I mean, even being able to destroy these walls would be amazing. But as you can see, they're all indestructible. So I think I'd love to see something like that. Because at the moment, like it's just one choke point. But it'd be great if they could like, I don't know, like grapple up here somehow you know maybe climb the mountain because a lot of the uh, scottish seeds battles I've, i actually recently went to see i uh, went to edinburgh and went to uh the edinburgh castle and they were saying that one of the only times edinburgh castle was taken was when i think it was like 34 men or something climbed up the side of this huge cliff and just like like took over the garrison which is crazy, because if you've seen Edinburgh Castle, it is literally atop this huge fucking... I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it like a... It's not a mountain, but it's not... It's not like a hill either. Like, it is a, a cliff, I would say. Yeah, cliff's a perfect thing to say. And, like, like and that, I can't imagine trying to storm that castle, because it is literally just, like, windy paths going up. It's like the Eerie, almost. 
Um, I mean, maybe that's what the eerie was crafted after uh, or influenced by. But yeah, like I can't imagine trying to storm that castle because it would just be insane. But yeah, like it's just like it'd be cool to have it kind of like that more depth to siege battles where you can like even maybe being able to try and like climb up here right away, like give you a huge debuff. And if you have defenders like just waiting for you, you're gonna get cut down. But yeah, it could be kind of interesting. And you know, again, just I uh, so just like small mechanics like that. I think would be really exciting to make in these siege battles have another depth to them and just take the battles to the next level. So as you can see, going back to the battle, the Anglo-Saxons are having a hard time of breaking this Welsh formation, especially with the amount of javelins and crossbows. I mean, just look at that. That's just a pile of death. If my captain told me to charge into this position, I would not do it. I would refuse. Love the chanting in the background. Hopefully you guys can hear that. I mean, it might not be a bad idea to set up Shield Castle here just to defend from these javelins. How many... Yeah, these javelins are almost out of ammunition, and so are the archers. Ooh! Okay, I think this is where they're going to really start to make their push. I mean, bands are power-wise. The defenders are not looking good whatsoever. They're the red bar. They're still at number 2 to 1. And even with all of this amazing missile fire, I feel like the Anglo-Saxons are still having a really hard job at breaking... Uh, at just losing this battle as the band's power is really, really in their favour. They have plenty of more reinforcements to send up, and I imagine this is all elite infantry, whereas the Welsh have a lot of archers left, which maybe are going to be losing their power. Out of interest, do the Anglo-Saxons have any missiles? They have javelins? Yeah, the Anglo-Saxons still have their javelins left, and it's actually a really sensible idea to keep these guys back. And they also have a few archers as well, because as the Welsh run out of ammunition, the javelins can come up and basically a free reign to take care of these guys. More of them are going down, but again, we have, you know, Wessex setting up their shield wall, their shield castle. And the shield wall is still holding, though. I mean, yeah, this is what the world have to bank on, that this shield wall can hold. But once their missiles run out, I think gaps are going to start appearing, and obviously the defenders can then exploit them gaps in the lines. You know, I don't know if they can actually get through here, pathing-wise. I don't know if this is actually blocked. It's probably blocked, yeah. But, you know, maybe you can break your way through there. There are gaps. This is a pretty gnarly shield wall, though, right there. Like, oh. That's pretty good. Also, I will say, performance-wise, they've done a good job with Friends Britannia. We've had, what, 15,000 soldiers, and it's it wasn't even phased, really. Like, it was a little bit laggy there when I zoom in. But everything else, you know, it's running perfectly fine. And that's great. Hopefully they can back pull that to Attila. I mean, please. For love of, I mean, they're not going to, but for love of God, that'd be amazing. If they did. I would also love to see someone make a Game of Thrones mod for Thrones. That'd be absolutely amazing. Just changing the factions in the campaign. And who knows, we might, we might end up seeing it one day. Like, just changing, like, because, like... You know, Britain, I, th I think Britain could do a good job at being West Westeros, you know. Obviously, it's not Westeros. It's influenced by medieval Europe. But I feel like, you know, you have the basic shape there. So who knows? You never, Like, in a year's time, we might end up getting a, a Game of Thrones, Thrones of Britannia. And I would play the hell out of that. That would be a lot of fun. Like, custom buildings, technology. be so much fun. I feel like the Ironborn, because you'd, you'd probably end up have to give him the Ironborn Wales, right? But you wouldn't be able to give him all of Wales. So, like, what would you do? I guess you. Could, I guess there's a lot of islands you could give them, and then maybe make... Island, like, as Essos, maybe? And give back to the Dothraki. And then have, like... And then have... Like, the islands is just the Ironborn all around England and Wales and Scotland. Obviously, Scotland being the north, the crown lands being, like, kind of the rich part of, of Wessex. I mean, no, pro no, probably Wales, right? Because Wales have a lot of, like, hills and mountains and mines, so that would be the crown lands. Oh, the western lands. I don't know where Dawn would go. <laughs> I honestly don't know where. I guess Dawn would go to the south of England, but it's not really very deserty, is it? 
So as you can see, the numbers are really thinning out on this left-hand side. There's barely anyone here, and the, the, the West Sex forces are just breaking their way through the shield wall as it does start to uh, break apart. They couldn't do this previously because there was just too many Welshmen there. But now that the lines have been a little bit eased out, and there's just not as many, there's not tight formations anymore, the fighting's been going on for long enough, they can now break their way forward. But they are still taking casualties. The amount of power is ever shifting in favor of the attackers. But I don't know. I feel like the defenders, as long as they can keep this line sturdy, they'll be okay. They also managed to deal with that little pull through right there. Although they haven't actually. This pull through has just gone ham. Look at it go. A Royal Spearman going up against some Welsh Axemen. Not bad whatsoever. However, there's just so many Westex infantry ready to pour into this gap. More and more of the Mercian infantry along with Wessex. Wessex actually have a really cool uh, triangle formation here, looking just to break through this you know, thin line of men. Um, they're going to be taking casualties doing this, but they're going to be able to break through just because of the, the few amount of men that are still left on this right-hand side. Uh, however, Wessex, are, I mean, the Welsh are going to see this and commit more infantry over here, so it's a good way to silence this and stop the gaps from appearing in the battle line. I mean, again, if they have that triangle formation, they could try and break through here. But also, the Welsh are doing a good job at plugging these holes. You know, in defensive battles like this, where there's literally only one position right here, you have to go through these holes, you know, where, you know, there's, the, the lines aren't that deep. You have to just try and pull your force through the enemy formation once they're really thin. Like, you can't do it to something like this. But right here, where there's only, like, two or three men, you can easily break through this just with weight of numbers. The Wessex are losing men dramatically. I mean, they've managed to... I mean, the Welsh have managed to cut down the deficit by about a thousand men. Oh, but we're starting to see archers being brought into a fight. And do the Welsh... Welsh do have a few archers left. We also have artillery left as well. Interesting. The artillery, it looks like, are trying to hit these guys. But I don't know if it would be better just to try and hit this huge clump right there. The artillery goes overhead. Watch for arrows, that's what I mean, that's why you got your shield up, boys. Seems like such an awkward way to hold the shield as well. Because surely if someone, like, hit your shield, your wrist would, like, bend back on itself. Like, is that historically how they, hit, they held their shields, or is it just done for the game? Because I feel like if you're in a shield wall and you've got your wrist kind of in a fist shape facing towards the enemy, as soon as any pressure's on that, your wrist is just to get pushed back and like pushed downwards with the force and like probably end up like snapping. I, I can't imagine that's how they held their shields historically. Maybe down though, like maybe having a straight arm downwards is probably how. That, I can, that can make sense. But having it like push your, your wrist facing forwards and your arm like straight down. Can't be good. But maybe having your arm like all the way down facing to the floor and not having your wrist bent like that. Probably much more of a, a proper way. The Welsh are just having to commit more and more men to this breach point and I just don't know if it's going to be enough. We can see that the elite Wessex men are up here as well in their shield wall. But the fact that the Welsh don't have any ammunition left as well is going to play a huge part in this battle. The city, the city hasn't really been burnt down. The melee skill has gone down by one bow. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but how much do like, the Welsh have? Like, that's not bad. That's like, you know, maybe 3% reduction in melee attack. Like, that's a lot more than just minus one, right? It sounds like a lot more when you put it in percent-wise. I think the final couple of volleys of the archers are going out now. They still have a few shots left, but nothing really. If I was the uh, the the Mercians, I might try and see if I can break through my cavalry now. Because there's no real spearmen right here. And maybe a nice cavalry charge could just break the center. Try and pull through and then just try and attack a lot of these guys. More and more infantry being brought in. I mean, my god, babe, these battle lines are just so dope. There's just more and more infantry boring in. 
You're burning cities in the background. I mean, what is not, not, not to love right here? There's a huge Thrones of Britannia brawl. Looks like we're on our own. Doesn't look like you're on your own. You look like you've got 3,000 men ready to fight and die for you, if you ask me. More infantry being brought in. Now, this would be the perfect time to bring up more archers, if they have them. I just don't think the Welsh do have the support. Are they javelins? They are javelins. Nice. So, Wessex have brought some javelins. They're immediately being hit by the Welsh archers. Oh, and artillery as well. My God, that was brutal. But if these javelins can get any shots off, that'd be great. Also, is that like a, a scream of pain right there? That's what I want from Total War as well. It's more like, in the Blood and Gore pack, I want men screaming. I want men lying on the ground with the leg completely sliced off. Screaming in pain, you know? I want to see more of that, you know, liveliness of the battle. I even want to see some routing soldiers just drop their sword and shield and just sit on the ground and, like, cry into their hands like they've completely lost it, you know? I want that feeling in battles to make it feel like it was an actual battle and just how brutal it is. Because the Blood and Gore pack does a good job of kind of bringing it to life, but just more like screaming. I want, you know, soldiers being trampled and stuff. Is that too brutal of me? I don't know. Just doesn't... I mean, to be fair, the, uh, the Anglo-Saxon line is starting to thin out. They only have a couple more lines of reserves, but I feel like that the Welsh don't really have much left either. Number-wise, you can see, they're still at number two to one. And I think it's only a matter of time until this little section right here breaks and the Welsh just get completely overwhelmed. Okay, so we're actually getting a pretty big rout here by Wessex. Uh, a lot of their men are just falling back now. Uh, I know they are obviously depleted soldiers, so it's not as huge, but we did just get three or four units of Wessex breaking, and I think that's heavily down to these javelins being brought into the battle now and looking for blood. We're obviously in a perfect place to just overwhelm the enemy forces here. And rack up a lot of kills. I mean, how many kills do these javelins have? 120. And how much ammunition have they spent? They pretty much spent all their ammunition. But that's a good amount of kills. And it does a lot of shock damage as well. As you can see, Mercy are starting to route here. A lot of their men on the front line are just running out of soldiers. And I think in general, Wessex are running... Um, the Anglo-Saxons are running out of men. Only a thousand man difference right now. And they're still just not really any better at breaking through this formation they're trying to bring their men forward they're trying to drag through but the formation's just too heavy too in depth they're making some progress but the formation is just doing a great job at just staying stationary and you know just bouncing the enemy off as they do try and break through the gaps in the line which you definitely can't fault them at i mean the bounce power is still so much in favor of the attackers but I don't know, I think this is starting to look up for the defenders somewhat. But I mean, what do they even have left? Yeah, it's mainly just longbowmen, I guess, left now in cavalry. They have did just, yeah, longbowmen. Okay, yeah, a lot of their remaining men. They have one unit of sword guard fresh. And a few minute, a few more men of, like, veteran axes. They have about three units of heavy infantry left. Whereas the Mercians have all of this in reserve. Just waiting in marching column to be sent up. With the cavalry. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a mass route could occur, but I feel like there's so much more elite infantry is now being brought into this battle. That the, the clock is ticking, and when the men just slowly get grinded down, there's just not going to be enough Welshmen to take their place. Okay, we're seeing a large ditch defense effort right here from the Welsh. The uh, cavalry from Mercia tried to break their way through the sides and they were immediately stopped by the Royal Cavalry of the Welsh. But I just don't know if that's going to be enough to you know keep the tide because obviously more and more infantry is being broken upon. Gaps are appearing. The archers are scaring off the cavalry. And I mean, it, once the Welsh general goes down as well, it's going to be pretty big. But I mean, it's not like the Welsh general is going to go down easily. Uh, but you just have to be careful because I imagine a lot of javelins and missiles will all be focusing on trying to kill this cavalry. The last couple of infantry are pushing in again. I just don't know how long they can hold this. Oh, big gaps appearing. They could try and break through here. There's a big gap right here. There's nothing really stopping them. But the Welsh are going to see that and commit their last couple of units of infantry. They are seeing more and more Welshmen breaking though. And yeah, I think this battle is going to be over very, very soon.
the last two big bulks of infantry here could have maybe been spread out. I think this right flank is where the break is going to occur. They obviously still have this one unit of sword guard, where I think should really be like going in right here and just filtering in this position. The archers are scaring off the cavalry. Yeah, I think Mercy have brought their little last stand, you know, their last men. But I mean, number-wise, there's only still a thousand man. Like, a big mass route, some good cavalry charges could be great. And here's, like, at this point, it could have been a good idea not to commit your last three units of heavy infantry and help this little position right here. Let the enemy come into it, and then use your cavalry to hammer an anvil into the flanks. Like, that's one of the disadvantages right now of this, is that... The enemy are clumped up and you don't really have any missiles to silence them. So as soon as you ran out of missiles, maybe it would have been a great idea just to simply fall back into this box. And then let the enemy filter in a bit more. And then use the cavalry just to hit the sides where you can. But again, the Welsh didn't maybe have enough infantry to do that. As we do have more of the Wessex cavalry breaking their way through the lines. And yeah, this, this center point is just really, really thin now. You can see it's kind of bulky on either side. But this center point, if they were to drive through with some infantry, could be really, really effective. Okay, we'll jump back on board with this battle in the last two minutes. It looks like the attackers have finally managed to make their ground on the enemy. Uh, just running through their formation now. But it's just not enough of them to keep this from happening. And the defenders are simply just using their weight of numbers. The attackers, sorry, are using their weight of numbers to overwhelm this defensive position and push forward. The Welsh definitely put up an amazing defense. And this was a really good battle. How, what did you guys think of it? Did you enjoy this battle? Would you like to have seen something different? Do you not want to see Thrones of Britannia anymore? Would you prefer this but on a different thing? Do let me know in the comments down below. As I would be very, very interested to find out what your guys' opinion was on this um, as, you know, it'd be very, very interesting to uh, to see. Uh, we'll just kind of watch the last little stand right here by the Welsh Cavalry. Bravely fighting to the last. Definitely cannot fault them for their honour. Also, be sure to let me know as well if you prefer these longer battles rather than the shorter, like, 20-minute ones. I mean, this probably got cut down to like 40 minutes. Like, I feel like 40 minutes is a perfect length for battles. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Here we go as well. The heavy, heavy swordsman breaking forward. Just to finish off the last defense. I think they're also going to take the city center as well. But the attackers are going to be victorious. I mean, Banter Power did not lie. Banter Power said from the beginning that the attackers had a great advantage but I think I don't want to take away anything from my defensive formation I mean what a bloodbath this was as well I wish the battles in uh, Total War piled up because we would have a mound of men and horse laying dead here one of the enemy generals has gone down and there we have a valiant defeat for the defenders right there Whoa, 17 and 57 remaining for the defenders. But only a couple thousand, you know, just under 2,000 men left for the attackers as well. Take a look at kill-wise. Did anyone really rack up the kills? Some of this heavy infantry getting 235. Uh, the javelins not doing as good as... I, like, I was saying these javelins were going to be brutal, but they didn't do as great as they, they could have, really. The other Welsh force as well, uh, their, their kind of axe infantry doing amazing. Then taking a look at the uh, the Anglo-Saxon force, again, the spearmen getting slaughtered when they were sent forward first. However, they did their job. Some of this heavy infantry doing pretty decently, and again, the archers doing okay, but these Huskals were really the MVPs, 367 kills. And then taking a look at the other Anglo-Saxon army, again, pretty much everyone just doing a decent job, and then their heavy axemen and be sword kind of the uh, dominant uh, force right there so if you guys enjoyed this be sure to drop a like and a comment if you want to see more hour and 20 minute long battles in the future let me know and i'll see you guys in the next one